Hello students. In this video, I'm going to show you another way to solve a system of equations where we have ax equals b. This is a system of equations written as a matrix equation. This method may not be the most efficient. You may want to always resort to something like Gaussian elimination to solve a system of equations. But I would encourage you to explore solving systems this way, just practicing it a couple of times at least, just so you can get a feel for it, because this, the mathematical ideas behind this methodology have far-reaching applications when we continue to study linear algebra and when we go on to study things like null spaces and rank of a matrix and column space and row space of a matrix and the theoretical aspects of what it means to solve a system of equations. So I encourage you to follow along and think deeply about what it means to solve a system using the inverse of a matrix. All right, let's go. All right, so here's the strategy. You have AX equals B. What we're going to do is we're going to multiply each side of the equation by A inverse. And then we know that A inverse times A gives us the identity matrix, this identity matrix here. And since I have a three by three matrix, we'll get the three by three identity matrix. It's a matrix with ones on the diagonals and zeros elsewhere. I'll show you why that's relevant in a moment. And on the right hand side, we respect the order of matrix multiplication, matrix vector multiplication, and we keep the A inverse on the left. That's important. And Realize that the identity matrix times a vector just gives you the vector back again, just like the identity matrix times a matrix gives you the matrix back again. I encourage you to try this multiplication. Take i times x, in this case, where x is x1, x2, x3, it's that column vector. And then if you just perform the multiplication, you take x1 times this first column, plus x2 times the second column, plus x3 times the third column, and you see that you just get an x1 in the top entry, an x2 in the middle entry, and an x3 in the bottom entry. And when you add all those together, you get x1, x2, x3, and a column back again, and of course that gives us x. So that's the value of multiplying the left-hand side by A inverse. The value of multiplying the right-hand side by A inverse is that we've reduced the problem to a matrix multiplication. So solving this system of equations, if you happen to have the inverse, actually is a very efficient way to solve the problem. Um, it only becomes inefficient when you have to go about finding the inverse. You might be better off using Gaussian elimination. But anyways, um, just multiplying by A inverse um, on the right-hand side will give us a solution. So we're going to just use that, okay? I'm just going to apply that formula, so to speak, to solving the system. Now, I just wanted to encourage you once again to convince yourself that A times A inverse does give you the identity matrix if you just perform this multiplication. And likewise, this is one case where matrix multiplication, multiplication commutes, that A inverse times A will also give you the identity matrix. So I encourage you to, as an exercise, to perform these matrix multiplications. At least do it once so that you can convince yourself that a matrix times its inverse gives you the identity matrix. Now you might be asking, how do I know that, for example, the inverse, I could compute the inverse. You know, does that all, is it always the case? Does every square matrix have an inverse? And the answer to that question is no, but there is one test you could try for determining whether or not a matrix has an inverse. And you could take the determinant of the matrix. Here I expand upon the right, the uh, third column. And when I expand upon the third column, um, I expand, uh, compute the determinant this way. So this one corresponds to here, and then I get two, five, two, seven for that two by two determinant. This is this gets a minus sign associated. Remember it's plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, then uh, plus, minus, plus. So down this way, it's gonna be plus, minus, plus. Um, I get a zero here, so it doesn't really matter what the middle entry is, but the determinant is built out of one, five, two, seven. And then likewise, I get a one on the bottom entry here, 
that's where that one comes from. And I look at this square matrix, one, five, two, five for my two by two matrix. So two times seven is 14, minus 10 is four. The middle entry is zero. And then I get five minus 10, if I multiply five, and then five times two, so five minus 10 is minus five. So four minus five is minus one. That is not equal to zero. So since the determinant isn't equal to zero, we know that A inverse does in fact exist. So now, in a previous video, I computed A inverse. You could go about doing that or see how to do that, or you could just take my word for it that this is A inverse. So I'm going to apply this result here. This was our strategy that the solution is equal to the inverse of A times the right-hand side, B. So the right-hand side is 1, 3, 1. Here's A inverse that I'd computed previously, and then I just go about and I perform the matrix multiplication. So I take one, I multiply by the first column, I take three, multiply by the second column, take one, multiply by the third column. When I do that, I get minus five, two, minus four for the first column. Three times this vector gives me minus six, three, minus nine. One times the third column gives us five, minus two, five. And then I just add across the top entries the top entry, the middle entry, and the bottom entry, and I get minus six, three minus eight is the solution to this system. So x equals minus six, three minus eight. And then of course you can check that solution by multiplying A, the matrix here on the left, times x and see if you do in fact get the right hand side. And you can just check that, you know, minus six times one is minus six plus 15 minus eight. So minus six plus 15 is nine, nine minus eight is one and then so on and so forth. You'll see that you do get a three and a one. All right, so that's how you can check your answer. So remember, it's this strategy that helps us deploy this method. All right, good luck.